Hello everyone and welcome to Teach Me in 10, the video series brought to you by Technology Networks, where we ask scientists to describe their research area or scientific concept in less than 10 minutes. My name is Rihanna Lily Smith and I'm an editorial assistant for Technology Networks. Our guest for this video is Michael Skurs, a PhD student from VB KU Leuven, where he combines analytical chemistry, sensory science, and artificial intelligence to gain a deeper understanding of beer flavor. Today, Michael is going to teach us about gas chromatography in just 10 minutes. So Michael, if you want to tell me a little bit more about gas chromatography. Yeah, of course. Um, let's leave the gas part out for a while and let's start with chromatography. So chromatography, it translates from Greek to writing colors, uh, which already hints at its origins. The first use of chromatography was to separate different plant pigments uh, into the different pigments themselves, into different colors. Um, and so nowadays chromatography is any kind of, of analysis where we start with a complex mixture of different components and we want to separate it into isolates into single units and then quantify or measure them. Um, this has, of course, a lot of broad applications because a lot of the things we deal with are not just one single type of chemical, but are a mix of a lot of different molecules. Uh, when it comes to gas chromatography, the word gas indicates that we're analyzing or separating our uh, molecules in the gas phase, uh, which it's easy for a lot of things, like the flavor compounds, the, the aromas that we smell every day are already in the gas phase. Although sometimes you also need to help it along a bit. So often gas chromatography will heat up samples and work with higher temperatures around 100 or 200 degrees Celsius. So what happens is we have a complex gaseous mix and then we run it through what's called a chromatography column. I like to compare it with going down a slide where if you would have a very smooth steel slide, you go very fast. If the slide would be made out of rubber, it's a lot harder and you would go much slower. The same is happening at the very small scale with the chemical compounds in our gas mixture. As they're traveling through the column, which is actually a very, very thin and long tube, it's a few millimeters in diameter, uh, but it can be 10 to 30 meters long. Um, as the molecules are traveling through it, they will be interacting with the coating of this column. Some molecules interact very strongly, similar to going down a rubber slide, and they will take a long time traveling through this tube. Others don't feel any affinity with the column and will just blow through quite easily. Um, all the while, they're being pushed by some gas that's also blowing down the tube. So it's pushing the molecules and the ones that want to stick around longer will take a longer time traveling. Um, and this process allows us to separate complex mixtures. It's used all throughout the world nowadays in all different types of sectors that are handling liquid or gaseous mixtures, ranging from food and beverage, where of course flavor compounds are very important, um, but also petrochemistry, uh, environmental science, perfume industry, odorants, a whole range of different things. Um, let's maybe go a bit deeper into the actual mechanism of the column. So the rubber slide is not the best example. It, it nicely um, exemplifies it, but what's really going on is nothing like the friction you would have in a rubber slide. There's different ways that you can have chemicals or, or molecules slow down or move faster, but often it's based on electrical interactions between them. So at a very tiny level, you will have negative or positive charges that interact with these molecules and make them stick around. Um, in some other types of chromatography, it can also be more size based where you have a grid, a complex gel, and then um, larger molecules will have a harder time moving through them than bigger ones, uh, than, than smaller ones. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that we can separate 
uh, these complex mixtures. And then finally, after separating, we need to detect and quantify them, which is done with a detector. There's all sorts of different ways to do this. Uh, we can either use a flame and burn whatever is coming out of our column, burn the chemicals, and then they will emit light as they're burning and we can capture this and analyze it. Uh, we can also um, measure the atomic mass of these super tiny particles and actually quantify them that way. So measuring how heavy they are and using this uh, with a microscopic scale to see what's coming out. Um, or there's other approaches where we measure electric conductivity, uh, things like that. Finally, besides the interactions that these molecules already have with the column, we can also further help it along by playing with the pressure of the gas that's pushing them or with the temperature of the column itself. So often, as we are separating these mixtures, we will gradually increase the temperature, which makes the more strongly interacting compounds release, stop interacting, uh, and move out of the column, which we call eluding. So besides just having a column that interacts with these chemicals ourselves, we can also play around with pressures or with temperatures to help the process along. And these are the tools that a chromatographist uses to isolate different uh, mixtures. In the end, it allows us to um, precisely measure specific components in a complex mixture, which is relevant for all kinds of industries. Thank you for joining us here at Teach Me in 10. If you'd like to learn more about my Kiao or gas chromatography, make sure you check out the resources linked in the video description. Stay tuned for the next installment of Teach Me in 10.